morning ladies and gentlemen welcome to my channel we are in the 23rd nakshatra of dhanishta which falls two padas into capricorn going into aquarius so you know stepping essentially from the 10th house into the 11th house of gains mars driven nakshatra so it's highly aggressive in nature it's got passion, it's got aggression and its life lesson is to find the right kind of resources to make true wealth. It's after wealth because it's 11th, 10th, going into 11th house, yes? The right kind of resources being the key word there. What is right kind of wealth? It needs beauty, it needs wealth, it needs materials. We are talking about inanimate things essentially. Because Capricorn going into the Rahu driven sign of Aquarius makes it unconventional also. So the drive of Dhanishta is to find resources. Okay. The symbol, that's what we are looking at now, is peacock as a bird and lioness as an animal. So right off you can see these are very dominant signs. These are not quiet animals. They are very highly displaying of things. And we are talking about essentially instinct houses. Yes. 1, 4, 5, 8 and 12. We'll come to that towards the last part of the video. Let's see the basic instincts first. Peacock. Innate beauty display. Peacocks have an instinctual drive to display the vibrant striking plumage during courtship to attract peahens. We all know this. Territorial instinct, we all know this. Social behavior, they are in small flocks or groups. Mating and courtship instincts, instinctual mating behavior, again, common to all birds. We won't spend much time there. Vocalization, they have an iconic call system for courtship. Most animals display iconic calls only for courtship purposes. The lioness, on the other hand, is a matriarch of the family. They are the hunters. They are carnivorous predators. Again, the Martian energy shows up here. Hunting and consuming other animals. Feeding the entire family is the lioness's job. Lion just sits there, does nothing. Social behavior and pride structure. Lionesses are highly social animals. living in brides with a complex social structure. They work together as a pack, a pa pack of lionesses hunting in the savanna, for example, nothing can escape it. They are very shrewd. They are raising cubs, they are defending their territory, they are feeding their entire family. So that's the symbol of the Nishta. Think of that. It's the only one which has lioness as the animal. Territorial instinct, yes. Maternal instinct. Lioness is a strong maternal instinct, caring and nursing their cubs and teaching them how to hunt and survive. They lead the pack in every single way, lionesses. Yes. In a pride of lions and lionesses, it's always a whole bunch of lionesses which lead everything. They take care of the entire household, you might say. Hunting skills and teamwork. They have remarkable hunting skills and teamwork to bring down a large prey. So in order to meet the life lesson, just seeing the instinct here, we'll get to the two times next. Just seeing the instincts, pride is the dominant theme of the Nishta. Both have pride in them. Both display very strong courtship behaviors if it comes to number five, especially Dhanishta in 5, which is Capricorn Aquarius, really. And when it comes to taking care of the family, even, even there they display a lot of drive for protection, a drive for taking care of their young and their family. So this is the right kind of resources to make true wealth. Dhanishta is represented by musical instruments. So if you have a domina, dominant Dhanishta in your chart, 
it would be a nice thing to put up the symbols, the paintings of drums, flute, etc. Or even physical instruments in your house. It will amplify your dhanishta. Okay? Let's see the totems part. Esoterically what this might mean. Now let's look at the instinct part of it and the totems what it represents. Right? Peacock first, the bird. Beauty and elegance. Peacocks are renowned for their stunning vibrant plumage. Their totem might emphasize the importance of embracing beauty, creativity and elegance in one's life. Could be a dominant theme in Danishta, especially falling in the fifth house of creativity. For a Libra ascendant, for example, if Danishta is here and here, fourth and fifth, this is strongly suggested. Confidence and self-expression. Peacocks display their feathers proudly, symbolizing self-confidence and the need to express oneself authentically and boldly. <clears throat> if you are having it in Ascendant, this figures strongly. Confidence and self-expression. Ascendant in the Nishtha. Vision and awareness. The distinctive eye pattern on peacock feathers is associated with vision and heightened awareness. Sort of looking at the third eye, kind of looking at the other side. This totem may inspire individuals to see situations from multiple angles and gain a deeper understanding of their surroundings. You will see how we go through this 1, 4, 8, 5, 8 and 12, how this works out essentially. Resplendence and exuberance, peacock feathers display enthusiasm, celebration and exuberance. You are going essentially from 10th to 11th house, so it's a celebration of the gains. What have you got to reap in this life? Gaining wealth. Okay? Hence the name Danishta. Their totem meaning can encourage individuals to embrace moments of joy and celebration. Lioness, on the other hand, provides maternal and protective instinct. Lionesses are nurturing mothers, fiercely protective of their cubs. So this totem may represent love, protection and strong bonds between mothers and children, especially in the fourth house. Danishta is dominantly appearing in the fourth house. Cooperation and community, again fourth house. Lionesses are social animals and rely on cooperation within pride for survival. Their totem symbolize the value of community and teamwork. Fifth house, looking at the eleventh house. Courage and resilience. Lionesses exhibit resilience in hunting and facing threats. So this stresses the importance of bravery, the ability to overcome adversity. It's a Mars rule. Nakshatra is very strong. Okay, they are bold people. Lionesses are loyal to their pride and they exemplify unity. Their totem represents loyalty to family, friends, loved ones, power of unity, fourth and fifth house. So Dhanishta, as we can see, is dominantly active in fourth and fifth houses. Independence and individuality. This is one more thing that lionesses can represent. Yes. Now let's see the instinctual houses. When it comes to instinct for the Mars rule nakshatras, essentially we are talking about Murakshirsha, we are talking about Chitra and we are talking about Dhanishta. These three Mars rule nakshatras, they can be split in two houses also. Yes, because first two padas come in Capricorn next to in Aquarius. So it can be. But anyway, let's talk about just the houses for now. <coughs> First house represents the head, one's personality, physical body, thinking process, intuition and logic and reasoning. So in the first and fifth houses, first is what you're born with, fifth is where you're creating and educating yourself, how you bring it to the world. First is called Svabhava and fifth is called Prabhava, meaning what effect you have on others, the fame part. 
So Capricorn Ascendant could be, could be Aquarius Ascendant even. Okay, so Capricorn Aquarius 1 and 12 if it's playing out because these are adjacent houses. Your dominant urge might be to go out, learn from people, give to people, at the same time get some power, finding the right kind of resources with other people and within yourself. The fourth house is the home, the family. So fourth and fifth, if it plays out, could because again two padas split between Capricorn and Aquarius. So it's Basically, we are talking about Libra ascendants here, can play out. Heart center, family, home, emotional, contentment, homeland, local community. A lot of heart focus, a lot of creativity can be brought forward by these people, Libra ascendants, if Dhanishta is showing up more in these houses. Okay. Fifth house, house of creativity. Your navel chakra, the belly, creative intelligence. If it is showing up here, your courtship behavior might be very maternal in instinct, very proudly displaying off your physical sense of beauty, for example. <coughs> If it's playing out more in the 8th house, 8th house where you will find resources, Dhanishta, in other people's wealth. 2nd house is earned wealth, 8th house is other people's wealth. Be careful where you go with this. Don't try to be too aggressive, Mars driven Lakshadra, to go out and conquer and plunder other people's resources. It will come back. Okay, don't do that. Try to find it within yourself. Number 12, again Aquarius Capricorn relationship for a Capricorn Ascendant as well as for an Aquarius Ascendant. So how does this play out? 12th house is the house of how you spend your money, how you give away your energy, how your subconscious mind, psychology, dream time, hidden desires play out. It's called the house of spirituality also, yes? Dhanishta here will want to bring, find the right kind of spiritual people in your life, truly spiritual, not going around hanging things around their neck or wearing a certain kind of dress. We are talking about emotionally centered people. It would be wise for you to find those kind of resources. It would be wise to give your resources to the right kind of people, institutions, 12th house. Don't just give away your wealth to anyone and everything. And then try to make your life work for you, finding the right resources. This comes after Shavana, obviously, where you were whole goal as a nakshatra was to have inquisitiveness about the goal. Once you have the goal in mind, Dhanishta says, find the resources to make things work. Next, we shall go into the heart of Aquarius. I think it is Purva Bhadrapada. Yes, I keep losing track of these things. Instincts, yes, no Shatabhisha, the abstract one. Let's see that next. The previous videos and all future videos also you can find it in my channel if you're so interested. Take care. Bye-bye.